Deep-seated in tradition and rivalries, the Inland Northwest has produced world-class athletes for generations. Over the next 30 minutes, we dive into the major headlines and minor storylines that make up our area. Not only do athletes have a direct impact in our community, we examine life after the competition, as some are staying to keep traditions alive. Don't go anywhere. This special edition of Inland Northwest Sports is starting right now. Welcome to Krem 2's Inland Northwest Special. We're highlighting the rich history and tradition that flows through all aspects of Inland Northwest sports. I'm Travis Green. And I'm Andrew Quinn. We are highlighting college basketball players who bring something special to the court. Let's start with one of the big transfers for GU this year, guard Malachi Smith. I talked to him about winning a high school state title, along with the impact his mom's had on his life. In high school, won a state championship, right? Yeah, I did. Um, we was the first team to win state below uh, Peoria, which is like Chicago, pretty much since uh, Sean Livingston in 2004, I think. And he was a he NBA, you know, was an NBA for a long right. time. So what we did was really historic as well. You know, everywhere we went, people knew who we were, like in the city. So that was that was cool. That was a good experience too. <laughs> the out of towners, huh? Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay, you guys won state, right? We're like, yeah. You know, we were like trending on Twitter when we won and like we all took screenshots. We're like, oh my God, we're trending, we're trending on Twitter, <laughs> you know, because it, it doesn't usually happen. Like Chicago always wins, you know. Chicago has so many great players from Derrick Rose to Jabari Parker and Jalen Brunson. Like they've kind of took, taken over like all those years, like back to back. Like all of a sudden you have this team from Belleville. You're like, huh? Like, you know, so that was something. Yeah, we, we got to brag for a long time about that. <laughs> Smith's taken quite the journey to Gonzaga, starting at Wright State, transferring to Chattanooga, and now in Spokane. But it's something he's used to, as he also made a move in high school. Do you think that prepped you? What you went through in high school prepped you for the yeah, college? Yeah, well, my mom was in the military, so we had to move a lot anyway, and some of that was out of our control, you know? So if it's like, hey, we gotta move, like, that's just what it is, like, for work or whatever. Um, but, like, transferring schools, you know, for different reasons, you know, I think it um, helped prepare me, like, each school helped my game grow in a different way, in a different aspect that helped me create the player I am today. And um, I still have a lot of work to do, but I feel like I've came a long way from where I started. You touched on it a little bit with your mom being in the military. Um, obviously moving a lot comes with that, but I imagine a structure, you know, rigid, yeah. you know, a tough mindset comes from that. What, do, what, what is, have you learned from your mom that's helped you with your basketball? Um, to never quit, to never give up. You know, life is hard and it's going to throw a lot of different curveballs at you. But you have to be able to not to, to 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 like pick yourself up whenever it goes that way. Like don't stay down. You know, she was a single parent and she was, you know, working and going to school at the same time trying to raise me. And, you know, I saw her fight and her willingness to like not give up and not take no for an answer. So that's kind of been my approach, you know, whether basketball's going good, whether it's not, like good or bad days, every day's not great, but you know, never staying down, always fighting and always trying to do more. So I kinda of took that from her. Like that never I never say no mentality. That's awesome. I imagine mom's biggest fan. Yeah, she is my she is my biggest fan. She tries to come as many games as possible, but she's always watching. And after every game, I get like a like a critique of like what I did wrong and stuff like that. <laughs> but like she was she was hard on me, but it was out of love. Like I knew it was all love. Like she just she saw in me what I didn't see in myself. You know, at a young age. So like she was just pushing me to get to that point to where I am now. Who's a tougher coach, mom or Mark Few? Uh, Mark, Coach Few is pretty, he's pretty <laughs> tough, but my mom, like, it, she's tough, she's pretty tough too. I would say, like, there, there's different levels of tough, like, I know Coach Few, that's his job, you know what I'm saying? Like, my mom loves me so much, but somehow she can still, like, get in my behind. I'm like, how do you love me that much but can still say these things or, like, do this, you know? So, it's kind of equal, but I know it's both, they're both out of love, though, so it's all good. Andrew, I'm sure it's a lot easier to step into a scenario where the head coach isn't as hard as you as your mom is hard on you. That's right, yeah. And he said right there that some of the things his mom was saying, he's like, how could you love me so much and say these things? So I wonder what it is she said to him, but uh, obviously yeah. loves his mom very hey, much. He's been huge for Gonzaga this season. Malachi's Absolutely. really stepped up. Hey, he wasn't the only transfer addition to this year's team. How about Efton? Yeah, I sat down with Reed earlier this year to talk about his basketball beginnings and what brought him to the Inland Northwest. Have you always been the tall kid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've always been the tall kid yeah. throughout all my classes. Since like kindergarten, I've always been way above all my other classmates and stuff. So it's just 
just been like that the whole my whole life basically. My mom's just taught me how to like, you know, embrace it and just embrace being the tallest man in the room. So it's really not no biggie to me. Take me through high school. You start off at Stewart, average a double double, and then you make the decision to go down to IMG. What kind of precipitated that for you? Well, it was kind of difficult because I love I love the Stewart School. I love love my high school coach. I love the community at the Stewart School and just love Virginia basically. And what really made me make that decision is COVID. So I didn't know if we were going to be playing games or not. So I just made that move just based on my basketball career and just trying to see, okay, what is the best decision for me? It was just me down there. My mom stayed and my brother stayed in the room okay. and stuff. Yeah. What was that like for you? Was that your first time kind of on your own? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because I've always been with my family, my mom, my brother. So it was kind of different for me. But again, you know, you got to grow up sometimes and you just got to make decisions that better yourself in the future. So that's what I did. Switching to college then, uh, obviously you got a lot of offers. You're an ESPN five-star guy. Just take me through that whole process of getting recruited and then how did you end up choosing LSU? Man, I, when I first started out basketball, I didn't really know I was gonna do all them, have all the accolades and stuff, but I'm just, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed and I feel like, you know, that program could, you know, develop me to a pro. So that's where I, that's where I went with and plus, my IMG roommate, Brandon Murray, he was down there too. So I was like, shoot, why not? Let's do it, man. We already, we played together great at IMG. So I feel like we could do it the same and dominate the SEC. And when you moved from high school, from IMG to the collegiate level, and you started every game last year, how was that transition for you? I mean, definitely like I had to adapt to it. It was, yeah. it was kind of hard, you know, trying to figure out, like, I can do this, but I can't do this. But I can, you know, I'm, I'm really good at this. So it's, it's all about, you know, learning, learning through and playing through your mistakes as a freshman in college basketball. You really learn a lot. And it's just because, you know, you go from being the big fish, you know, dominating everybody to, you know, okay, all right, I got to step up my game now because there's a lot of guys like me. After your freshman season, you make the decision to transfer. Just kind of what went into that uh, decision and, and what made you think about moving elsewhere? Well, you know, just uh, the coaching staff got fired. So, I mean, I was just like, let me just explore all my options basically. I'm the type of person I'll explore all my, all my options and see what the best opportunity for me and opportunity present itself. What was it about Gonzaga that kind of sold you on this place? Just their history of bigs honestly. Just their history and development of bigs. How they got their guys you know developed and to the next level and just just the history basically. Yeah so obviously Efton missing some time there at the end of the season yeah. with a concussion but hopefully as March Madness rolls along and gets back out on the court and can have a little bit of yeah. an impact here going it's, forward. Especially if they're playing a team with a real big man speak like Purdue is Zach Eady, Efton's got that side. Absolutely they need a big bodied center just like him for those yeah. matchups. Hey the women's basketball team's also having a good season specifically senior guard Brenda Maxwell has been tearing it up on the court this season becoming one of the best three-point shooters in the entire country. Yeah a four-star recruit out of Gibbs Harbor. She chose to attend the University of Utah where she became a two-time All-Pac-12 honorable mention. After graduating in just three years from Utah, Maxwell made the decision to enter the transfer portal. The first school that came calling was the one that finished second to Utah in her first college decision. What I wanted out of the next couple years and what Coach Lisa and the staff wanted for me out of the next couple years matched up and prayed a ton about it and here I am, and I don't regret it, and I'm having a time of my life. This season, Maxwell has become the best three-point shooter in America, posting a mark just above 50% from beyond the arc through this season's games. That's incredible. Some people train their whole lives to compete at the Division I level, but some people, they just fall into it. How WSU's Jack Wilson found himself stepping off the court and into the trenches next. The last two players we heard from were clearly destined to be in basketball. For this next guy, however, it kind of just <laughs> happened. Yeah, down in Pullman, Jack Wilson is as big as they come. About the only thing larger than him is the idea of what he's accomplished over the past year. Hit. Yeah. Right. yeah, I work really hard, but I also have these crazy genetics, so I, I like just understand that I might as well use them as best as I can. A name Washington State fans will remember. You see Jack Wilson right there, the tackle, the tallest football player in Washington State history. He is six foot 11. Not only is Jack Wilson the tallest football player in program history, but he's also the first to play football and basketball since 2008. And I think football really complements it. I was already kind of a physical player. Something about it has just felt really good on the basketball court. I'm more relaxed. 
Um, and it's been a lot of fun. I feel like a different person on the court. When you hear Wilson's story, you think football player turned basketball big man. But it's actually the opposite. Wilson's collegiate career began in basketball, spending his freshman year on Oregon State's team before transferring to Idaho. After two seasons, he decided it was time to stop playing basketball and transfer to WSU to focus on his future career. I had my sights on becoming a strength coach. Like, that's where I was at. I was ready to get into that. Um, get like kind of a jump start on my career. That jump start was interning with the Cougs strength and conditioning staff, where they saw his strength and size, which later led to football head coach Jake Dickert getting Jack on the team for a sport he'd never played. Um, it was kind of like a one year thing, see how it goes. I ended up earning a scholarship for this last season and I mean, it was a blessing. After two seasons of football, Jack thought it was time to go back to his original plan. But then a slew of injuries hit the WSU basketball team. Luckily knew him way back when he was a sophomore in high school going his junior year. So I knew he could play basketball and he tried to stay in the football. And then we had an injury, season and injury for one of our guys. I was like, I called up Jake. I said, hey, I don't know how much Jack's playing for you right now, this and that. But gosh, you might, we might need him this year. But Jack was up for it and it's been uh, great, great to have him around. So Jack, the now football player, got back on the court. I saw one of his workouts you know, the one day and I was like, whoa, Dude's actually like good. Like I didn't, I honestly, I didn't know what to expect the whole time, but I was expecting to be like a football player, just kind of going down there and banging and stuff. I definitely was surprised with his skill set. It's really been a blessing to come back to basketball. I think I didn't really leave it. it. It was something I did my whole life, and I did a lot of growing up from the time I stopped to now, and coming back to it has been really cool. It's. I don't know, I, fun's not even the word. It's just like a wild experience and I just take it in every day and try to make the most of it. Ah oh, man, talking to Jack was so fun just hearing his story. And you know, it's funny, I asked Justin Powell, name something that you know most of us don't know. He said he loves protein. Uh, well, you can there tell. you go. I mean, <laughs> beefy boy, yes. for sure. But yeah. uh, to go from football to basketball just like that in one season and lose a bunch of weight because right. he was an old lineman, pretty incredible Incredible, stuff. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, one of the best scorers in the nation, she resides in the Inland Northwest. And despite this being her senior year, her college career is not over quite yet. Yeah, so it is official now. I will be coming back for my fifth year. Didn't, didn't want to give that up. <laughs> and why wouldn't she be as top 10 in the country at scoring with 22 points per game this season? She's come a long way from her basketball beginnings. I didn't even really like basketball until I think fifth grade. I actually hated it until then. <laughs> that feeling luckily didn't last long as B became Washougal High School's all-time leading scorer and brought the school a state championship her senior year. That's something that we had worked for for so long um, and just getting to grow up with some of my teammates um, who had played club with me as well since like fifth grade. Um, it was just really special to bring that to our hometown. B has been a productive scorer every year of her college career, but this year she has taken it to a new level with a simple approach. Going into this season, I just really wanted to be more of a consistent offensive presence for the team. Um, just really work on being able to create more shots for myself and my teammates. Um, so just adding more moves to my bag types of things um, and then just being more confident with taking shots on the court. This season felt different right away for B. Those first couple games in the beginning of the season um, when I just really started seeing shots going in and um, just kind of realized that yeah taking my shots like this is something I can do this is what I'm capable of and this has been my goal for the last couple of years. All right, coming up, how one former Zag star is giving back to the community by coaching basketball at a local middle school. If we can give back any which way. I think that's what it's all about. The only way you're going to get it better is to help the younger generation. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but what if that dog is teaching the next generation of Bulldogs? Yeah, I talked with a former Zag turned boys basketball coach at the new Flett Middle School. Former Gonzaga great and Los Angeles Laker Robert Sacre was content coaching his daughter and his fifth grade son's basketball team. He had no intention of becoming the coach at any school. That was until he received a call from another former Zag at Flett Middle School. And I said, hey, what are you doing? Like, how are you doing? I've got some wonderful kids at Flett. We're needing a guy who can come in and love up on kids, be disciplined with them, help them grow in the sport, and show them the love that we have for this game. And I know he is like the perfect, just the perfect guy to do this. Tatriana Moravez used to back up Zag great Courtney Vandersloot. 
She is now a middle school counselor, but she has stayed around the game of basketball and took the girls' basketball job at Flett. Sacre knew Tatri from his GU days and decided to interview for the job. If we can give back any which way, I think that's what it's all about. You know, we, a lot of people want to complain about, you know, this generation, that generation, and, you know, they do all that old school, get off my yard stuff. But at the same time, the only way you're going to get it better is to help the younger generations. Flett Middle School principal Matthew Henshaw received quite a shock when the seven-foot Sacre folded himself through his office door for their interview. I did not know he was coming. My AD did not give me a heads up. And so it was pretty funny because obviously most people would recognize him and at first I didn't. So I was a little embarrassing for me, <laughs> but uh, what a fun story. And then the students knew but by the time he walked out of my office from the interview, kids were running around, look Sacre, I think he might be our coach. The main message preached from Coach Sacre to his team is accountability. I personally put a lot of pressure on these guys because, you know, that's life, you know, and I think it's important I learn life lessons throughout the game of basketball. So I think for me uh, it, to hold these guys accountable and, and put pressure on them at a young age, it's important. Coach Sacre is a straightforward coach and he expects a lot from his players, including running a transition offense similar to his old college. I learned a little one or two things from Coach Few, you know, I, I'm not going to give it all away, but uh, I definitely want to just play up tempo, high, high pace. These guys have ran a lot in practice. Like I said, it's, it, it's not easy to play for me in certain ways. I want them to run and, and go, and I think we're well conditioned. It appears Coach Sacre was the perfect man for the job to help get the Flett Middle School boys ready for high school ball. I'm just so fortunate that like my Zag family could step in and, and help the community as well here at Flett and help our kids. And just, I think, be just a wonderful mentor and role model, right? Like, we need good role models for these kids. Um, and he, I think we've got a good team here. Now, Travis, Coach Sacre still coaches his son's fifth grade team as well as the Flett team, and he runs his own excavation business in addition to this new gig. Busy man. Busy man. <laughs> he says he's unable to sit still, and the students and administration at Flett Middle School are grateful for that, and I'm sure, why not? Why wouldn't you why be? Why wouldn't you be? <laughs> That's right, but hey, up next, Holy shnikes, a phrase Bonner Sperry's head football coach made famous this past season. Uh -huh. oh, holy shnikes! Holy shnikes has become the iconic slogan for one North Idaho high school. It all stems from a high school football game we covered right here on Crim 2 Football Friday. The slogan not only became a fun rallying cry for the team, but it also turned into means of some financial support. Here's what Coach had to say. That just took off in our community, like I was saying earlier, our shirt lady that was trying to make shirts for our kids, the moms were getting shirts for the kids and the coaches, and on that Friday, uh, she said she had a couple hundred orders on that Friday and they stayed late. We estimated maybe 1,200 people here Saturday, the biggest crowd that we can ever remember. And for that full story by our very talented photojournalist Dave, you can head over to our website, crem.com. And that's all for Krem 2's Inland Northwest Sports Special. If you want any more of this, head over to our website, crem.com. That's going to do it for us.